the best and the bravest of us. Men and women who sacrificed everything to serve our country. Now, our country is turning its back on them. They hope I die. Thousands of aging heroes struggling to live without the benefits they desperately need. Hoping the system catches up to them before death does. No one would listen to their pleas for help. Except for senior investigator Steve Andrews. Would really like to get somebody to talk to us about that. Tonight, a Target 8 special. Delay, deny, until they die. Here are Keith Kate and Jennifer Lee. Thank you for joining us. Eight on Your Side is digging deeper into a national crisis that affects all of us. Our veterans need help, and our government is either unable or unwilling to keep the promises they made to them. What's even more heartbreaking, no one seems to want to listen to these service members who put their lives on the line for all of us. Our senior investigative reporter, Steve Andrews, has been fighting hard for our veterans. And Steve, so many people want to ignore this, but it's not going away. No, not when there are half a million veterans fighting with the VA. These are veterans who believe the VA wrongly denied them disability benefits. They face an appeals process that is just plain broken, locked in a waiting game. And for many, time is of the essence. Before he became ill, Rod McKelvin rubbed elbows with some very influential people. But in 2011, something started happening. My feet started getting very hot. My, my hands uh, started shaking. Rod soon needed assistance walking, even holding a pen. Like I say, I, I, get, <laughs> I get shakes real bad. It turns out Rod was in the Navy aboard the hospital ship USS Sanctuary during the Vietnam War. He went to shore frequently. The planes would fly right over, it's just pouring their stuff. That stuff was Agent Orange. Once, after 86 hours of surgery, he was rewarded with an excursion to China Beach. It was just sprayed. Here we were having a picnic, eating food uh, with our hands full of Agent Orange. Rod's developed diabetes and peripheral neuropathy. His hands and feet feel like they're on fire. The VA rejected his Agent Orange disability claim. In August, he was 12,717 on an appeals list. He was told he might hear from the VA in a year and a half. I said, well, I could be dead, but... <laughs> they hope I die or give up. I'm not going to give up. I hope the hell I don't die. Tom Jenkins spent time at Yuban Royal Air Force Base in Thailand during the Vietnam War. The military sprayed Agent Orange on vegetation around the perimeter. Tom stood guard there. In fact, they talk about this, you're standing in Agent Orange, but don't worry about it. It's, it's not uh, toxic, it won't hurt you. The VA rejected a claim that his heart disease and painful neuropathy are tied to Agent Orange exposure. Tom asked for an appeal hearing in Washington. In July, he got word 12,395 appeals stood in front of his. According to a report by the VA, its appeals process is broken. The present legal framework is complex, inefficient, ineffective, and confusing. Here's an example. An appeals board may have to consult over 921 linear feet of reference materials in any given case. That's taller than the Washington Monument and Statue of Liberty combined. Law professor and VA advocate Stacy Ray Simcox. It shouldn't take this much paperwork for one veteran to be able to get an Agent Orange benefit. Congress doled out $182 billion to the VA in hopes of making it more veteran friendly. That VA appeals process is broken. Eight on Your Side aired two reports in August profiling how doctors tied Rod's physical problems to Agent Orange exposure. Only then did the VA respond rapidly. So thanks to, to you and Channel 8 for this to show up on the news and two days later go from 12,000 to hey we got we got you covered. Following our reports Tom's case was moved to the top of the waiting list also. A VA program set up to resolve another crisis stumbled out of the gate. Congress was shocked when it learned veterans died while waiting for medical appointments. VA administrators also falsified records to show the system saw patients when it actually didn't. The Veterans Choice Program was supposed to get veterans in quickly for care. Luis Salvato served his country as a Marine from 1969 to 1971. At 66 years old, he was living in Spring Hill, suffering from liver-destroying hepatitis C. It's only going to be harder and harder to treat. And, I, and the longer it waits, uh, how, much, uh, how much liver am I going to have left? Lewis enrolled in the VA's choice program. 
Rather than trek all the way to Tampa's James A. Haley VA Hospital, he sought treatment from private doctors closer to home. They're supposed to give you an appointment and get you within 30 days. The government poured $10 billion of your tax dollars into the Veterans Choice Program. HealthNet administers the program in this half of the country. They are actually taking longer than if you just went right through the VA. Lewis waited for months for the VA and HealthNet to approve appointments. Our investigation found doctors were also waiting for months to be paid. After performing routine cataract surgery in July 2015 on a veteran participating in the Veterans Choice Program, Dr. Lawrence Goldberg of St. Petersburg was still waiting for the VA to pay him six months later. A couple of months would be fine, but this is getting a little kind of ridiculous. Money isn't the only problem. According to Dr. Goldberg, HealthNet required voluminous documentation. If we had to do this for every patient, I really couldn't practice and see very many patients in a day. For one patient, his office has spent multiple hours on the phone with HealthNet. And it shouldn't be this difficult. Dr. Goldberg tells me he's about done with the VA Choice program. His receptionist waited two hours on the phone with HealthNet the other day before speaking with a human. He is waiting to be paid for procedures that he performed in June and July. Well, Steve, whatever happened with Louis Salvato? Well, it's interesting because the day after we aired our report, he got a phone call and they said, hey, we saw you on the news. It might be a good idea to come on in for an appointment. He got that appointment after months of waiting. He was seen, put on new medication, and he called, called me and told me that his hepatitis C cured. Yeah, well, that's good. Which yeah. is amazing news, but as we saw with Dr. Goldberg, problems clearly continue. Yeah, you know, this is a $10 billion program that was thrown together in 90 days. One of the persistent problems is paying the providers. That falls on the VA and Congress to make changes to the current law and to make this program more efficient. All right. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Sure. Coming up, is the VA ignoring science to avoid paying out benefits? We'll explain why Navy veterans who drank and bathed in water tainted with Agent Orange are being denied. I expected my country to take care of me. Celebrate 2017 with an extra $1,000 off at Kane's New Year's Day Sale. This Sunday only, get up to $1,000 instant rebates, door-wide, or 0% interest for 60 months. Don't miss Kane's New Year's Day Sale, Sunday only at Kane's Furniture. Hello, Tampa Bay. I'm Dr. Frank Lanzacera, author of What's Wrong With My Thyroid? Thyroid symptoms like loss of sleep, hair loss, brain fog, and fatigue affect women and men. For more information, visit TotalThyroid.com. Check these out. They're valuable rooms to go coupons in your newspaper. Coupons that save you big money. Three days only, Saturday, Sunday, New Year's Day, and Monday at Rooms to Go. So find them, bring them along, save a ton of extra money. And look for all our great New Year's values throughout the store. Plus, you can finance interest-free until January 2022. Did you hear that? Extra savings coupons plus interest-free financing until January 2022. Three days only, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So hurry in. It's a great new year to shop Rooms to Go. Get some of our biggest savings and the lowest payments of the year right now during the Hyundai Holidays year-end sales event. Come lease the Tucson for just $129 a month or buy with zero down. Lease the Sonata for only $119 a month or buy with zero down. Or the Elantra on sale now for a low $109 a month lease or buy with zero down. And they all come with America's best warranty. Better is the reason to buy Hyundai. And the Hyundai Holiday Sales Event is the reason to buy now. During the final hours, get huge year-end savings now through Tuesday, January 3rd at Hyundai. Sorry, girl, but I'm not swinging at that deal. I get my pick of one of three sandwiches, seasoned fries, an apple pie, and even a drink for just three bucks. Welcome to the big leagues, Wendy. Rallies and checkers. Fast foodies know the deal. You have a lot of choices in the morning. Well, the kids need a jacket or an umbrella. Is the Skyway closed? Choose the morning newscast that's on your side with weather and traffic on the 8th. The choice is clear. Weekday mornings on News Channel 8 today. Now, back to our Target 8 special. Delay, deny until they die. Here again is Keith Kate. For one U.S. Army veteran, this is about as crazy as it can get. When you're dealing with the health and the well-being of our veterans, you can't afford to be wrong. But Steve Andrews tells us in this case, the VA got it wrong. In 1970, Rich Kincaid was in the Army. He was shipped to Vietnam. Rich was a medic assigned to an anti-aircraft duster unit, which provided perimeter defense for field artillery and fire bases. 
Military personnel in Vietnam are presumed to have been exposed to the toxic herbicide Agent Orange. Heart disease is linked to that exposure. In late 2007, I flunked a fire department physical because I had heart disease. So in 2010, Rich filed a claim with the VA for a service-connected disability. His file shows the VA examiner stated he had coronary artery disease. The VA wanted more tests, but never scheduled them. In August 2011, Rich sent a letter asking when the tests would be scheduled. And, of course, they did not respond at all to that. So you didn't get a yes, you didn't get a didn't no. Get a no, just got no answer. A few months later, the VA rejected his claim, stating you do not have a diagnosis of heart disease. It was by some bureaucrat based upon uh, apparently a, an opinion of a doctor that I have never met. Rich appealed the denial. Last year, VA doctors performed open heart surgery on Rich. He had advanced heart disease. The claim that I do not have heart disease seems to be wrong. <laughs> More than a year later, the VA still hadn't decided if Rich had heart disease, even though it operated on him for it. Rich contacted Eight on Your Side. I reached out to his congressman and the VA at Bay Pines and told him this is one of the craziest VA stories I'd ever heard. They both promised to look into it. Within a week, the VA determined Rich does, in fact, have heart disease. If you were boots on the ground in Vietnam between 1962 and 1975 and you developed any of these conditions, like heart disease or certain cancers, the VA presumes those illnesses are related to Agent Orange exposure and you may qualify for benefits. But the rules are different for about 90,000 Blue Water Navy veterans who served on ships in Vietnam's harbors and territorial waters. They say the VA is ignoring proof they were poisoned at sea. Fifty years ago, they were warriors, America's military fighting in Vietnam. Today, these veterans are parents, grandparents. Many, like Mike Coventus, are sick. I would fight for this country today. He suffers chronic kidney and heart disease, along with neuropathy, conditions he claims are connected to exposure to Agent Orange. Mike and 90,000 other sailors who served on ships in harbors and waters off Vietnam are now fighting the VA to reinstate Agent Orange benefits it stripped away 14 years ago. It just eats at me because I still support the country. The military sprayed Agent Orange on the jungle to kill vegetation and along riverbanks. Rivers flow into harbors. Deck logs obtained by Target 8 show Mike's ship, the Buchanan, maneuvering into Da Nang Harbor August 12, 1966. The military sprayed that area the same day. The plume covered that whole harbor. The VA rejects that Mike's illnesses are tied to Agent Orange since he never stepped foot on Vietnamese soil. Advocacy groups contend that the VA is ignoring scientific evidence that shows Blue Water Navy veterans may have been exposed to a more concentrated form of Agent Orange through ship's water systems. Distillation systems turn salt water into fresh to power ship's engines and more. We drank that water. Uh, we uh, bathed in it. According to studies done by the Australian Navy, as well as the Institute of Medicine, distillation systems actually exposed sailors to a more potent form of Agent Orange. But that actually did not remove the dioxin, it enriched it. Attorney and retired Navy Commander John Wells heads the military veterans' advocacy. So these guys were getting a straight shot, Agent Orange, into the drinking water. Declassified records obtained by Target 8 show this vessel and several like it supplied U.S. ships with drinking water from heavily sprayed areas of Vietnam. Not enough proof for the VA, a smoking gun for sick and dying veterans. I expected my country to take care of me, and they haven't done it. How disappointed are you in the country for doing that? Really. Really disappointed. The Agent Orange Act of 1991 allowed the VA secretary to declare certain illnesses presumptive to exposure to Agent Orange. The VA later stripped those benefits from Blue Water Navy veterans. Now, the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Act of 2015 would restore those benefits. Hundreds of members of Congress are behind it, but Florida Congressman Jeff Miller, who chairs the House Veterans Affairs Committee, won't allow the bill onto the floor of the House, so it will die in committee. So Jeff Miller bucking this, what's the reason for that? Well, he wants proof. He asked the Department of Defense for to check for traces of Agent Orange in the distillation systems of Vietnam-era ships. The problem is most of those ships, Keith, 
are at the bottom of the sea. Yeah, a little hard to do at this yeah, point. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Steve. Sure. Next, thousands of Marines stationed at Camp Lejeune, poisoned in service to our nation. They killed my husband. Coming up, why one widow continues to fight for her veteran husband even after he's gone. Here's something the insurance companies don't want you to know. In almost all of our trials, the at-fault driver has insurance. Now you know. Morgan & Morgan, for the people.com. Welcome, doctor. Nice Thank to you. have you here. Let's talk first of all about the problems caused by unattended veins. Unattended veins can lead to leg heaviness, aching, swelling, even leg cramps and restless legs. All right, how are symptoms like that treated? We treat veins with special medical lasers that have allowed our patients actually to return to work or activities immediately. Now, a lot of people are going to want to know if insurance covers this kind of treatment. Yes, because varicose veins lead to health problems and discomfort, it's covered by Medicare and most health insurance. How do we know if we have vein disease? See a vein doctor and they will conduct what's called a vein screening. That will allow you and your physician to know if you have vein disease. All right, good stuff. Thank you so much, doctor. For more information, all you have to do is go to the website on your screen, which is unitedveincenters.com, or you can call 800 Vein Doc, and Dr. Wozni will give you a free vein screening. I've thanked Steve I don't know how many times. My name is Rita Mixon, and this is my father, Walter Williams. He served in uh, World War II and Korea. One day, I got the mail, and uh, there was this letter in there saying that he had died. By the time we got involved, they were about out of time and money. Steve got everything taken care of. Dad got his money back, and they found out that he was really alive. I'm Rita Mixon of Lakeland, and that's why I believe in the power of eight on your side. It's Tampa Bay's first and most advanced high-definition news helicopter, Eagle 8 HD, ruling the skies over Tampa, Lakeland, the I-4 corridor. Eagle 8 in high definition is on your side. Brought to you by your Suncoast Hyundai dealers. Visit your local dealer today or shop by Hyundai.com. We return now to our Target 8 special, Delay, Deny, Until They Die. Here's Jennifer Lee. They were poisoned in service to our nation. Thousands of Marines and others stationed at Camp Lejeune in North Carolina were exposed to toxic chemicals in the water they drank. Camp Lejeune was truly devastating for so many families. Let's take a look back at how this all happened. The base was built in 1941 before the U.S. entered World War II. It was named Camp Lejeune in 1942, near the end. It's still unclear exactly when water contamination at the base began, but it's believed in August of 1953, that's the month that the first toxic chemicals in the water exceeded EPA standards. Now, this is pretty interesting here. For nearly three decades, Marines, reservists, and residents at the base unknowingly drank toxic water. Then finally, on October 1st, 1980, water samples were collected under new federal regulations for safe drinking water. A private lab confirmed 11 volatile organic compounds in the water. It wasn't until April 30th, 1985, that the commanding general of Camp Lejeune told residents about problems with the water supply. By May 31st, the contaminated wells were taken out of service, but the damage was already done. Government researchers concluded in a 1997 report, those stationed at Camp Lejeune were exposed to contaminants of concern and called the exposure a public health hazard. On August 6, 2012, President Obama signed a new law providing health care to those sickened due to their time at Camp Lejeune. But as we've seen, getting those benefits is a battle many veterans have lost. The ultimate betrayal is that these sick veterans are getting shrugged off, cast aside, and ignored. Here again is Steve Andrews. Camp Lejeune, where men and women become Marines. Where from 1953 to 1987, nearly one million Marines, their families, and civilian employees were exposed to contaminated water. The Marines promised to notify those who might be affected. 70-year-old Joe Zambito never heard from them. Joe joined the Marines at age 18 in 1964. Since then, he's lost both kidneys and his bladder to cancer. They said, you don't have to worry about anything when you join the service. The VA decided in 2012 Joe's kidney cancer was not related to Camp Lejeune. His bladder cancer was. It denied him benefits, claiming since his bladder was gone, so was his cancer. Eight on your side took this to Senator Bill Nelson. 
this is illogical, it's idiotic that that veteran would get an answer like that. In 2012, the VA handed cases like Joe's over to an anonymous group of clinicians called subject matter experts. There are concerns about how qualified these people are to approve or deny cases like Joe's. They're hoping that they'll die from their cancers and they'll never have to pay them any benefits. Following a series of eight on your side reports, the Zambitos received word they'd won their fight with the VA. Joe would receive 100% medical and disability benefits. You have no idea how big, much of a relief it is to not worry about any of that stuff anymore. Without you and Senator Nelson, we wouldn't be sitting where we are right now. Their celebration was short-lived. After he won his struggle with the VA for disability benefits, Joe died. Though he never said it to me, I always sensed that he was just holding on to make sure Judy was taken care of. Another Marine suffered a similar fate. In his place, his wife carries on his fight. Tara Craver is becoming a familiar sight at busy intersections outside VA facilities. She protests what she believes is unfair VA treatment of Marines and their families. They killed my husband. Tara's husband, Carl, was a Marine stationed at Camp Lejeune in the 70s, one of the many exposed. They didn't contaminate themselves. The government did, and they kept it hid for two or three decades. They kept it hid. Doctors diagnosed Carl with esophageal cancer in early 2014. He died 10 weeks later. Carl passed well before Tara received word the VA rejected his claim that the cancer was connected to Camp Lejeune. A VA doctor wrote, there was a less than 50-50 probability contaminated water caused Carl's cancer. Carl's oncologist wrote, there was at least a 50-50 chance or better it did. I've lost my husband, I've lost my home, I will not lose my dignity. So Tara wages her lonely struggle at busy intersections, hoping the VA hears her message. Accept what they have done to these families and these veterans, to love their veterans like their veterans love their country. If you or someone you know suffers from Camp Lejeune-related illnesses, there are several organizations, including the VA, that can help you find care and benefits. We have phone numbers and websites for you at WFLA.com. Next, the bizarre mix-up that left a World War II veteran and his daughter with a nearly empty checking account. On July 25th, they sent out a letter saying that my father was deceased. But he was still very much alive. How Steve made it right. You heard it. It's all over Facebook. It's all over social media. It's everywhere. That's right. Mr. Fusillo is flipping the tap for all your sales taxes for the next 10 days from December 26th through January 4th. December 26th through January 4th. I don't care what you buy. Any new vehicle purchased in the state of Florida from Mr. Fusillo only, he is paying your sales tax, folks. Purchase, lease, it doesn't matter. Where else can you get that? That's you, Jack. Brody really was struggling with school. Things weren't clicking. He had been sent to the principal's office four times. Prior to brain balance, we had spent five years trying to help, and it was doctors in different states, and it was therapists, and it was tutors, and it was private schools. With brain balance, it was the answer. He'd been in the program about three weeks. He seemed like a totally different kid in so many ways. It was what I wish we had found years earlier. Brain Balance Centers, a non-medical approach for kids who struggle. Learn more at brainbalance.com. I'm Robert Palmer, president of RP Funding, and I'm excited to announce the RP Funding Year in Sale. From now till December 31st, I'm offering our largest rebates ever, in addition to always paying your closing costs when you refinance and never charging lender fees. So whether you're refinancing your existing mortgage or buying a new home, call us today to find out how much more you can save with our year in sale. You must lock in by December 31st to take advantage of these special discounts. 
I can't begin to thank Mark Douglas enough. All we wanted was a simple room addition for our newborn baby. We paid the contractor $25,000, and who knew that it was going to be the beginning of this nightmare? Did Rick Metz ever finish your job? He never did. They suspended his license for working in Pinellas County. Mark's persistence, his perseverance, that's what makes him such a special reporter. My name is Sharon Tucker from Palm Harbor, and that's what Aid on Your Side means to me. Now, our Target 8 special continues. Delay, deny, until they die. When it comes to battles with the VA, this one is a real head-scratcher. A veteran still very much alive gets killed off by the VA. You'd think it would be pretty easy to prove he's still alive, right? Well, think again. The struggle this next family had to endure nearly left them in financial ruin. Thankfully, Steve Andrews was able to fix this chilling and careless mistake. Walter Williams faced death at Iwo Jima in World War II and then again in Korea. But in July, it was a mistake by the VA that killed him. July 25th, they sent out a letter saying that my father was deceased. For a dead guy, Walter Williams looks and sounds pretty good. So what's this for? Walter suffers from Alzheimer's. His daughter Rita cares for him full time. When the VA killed him off in July, it also deep-sixed his VA and Social Security pensions, then demanded back $1,700 it deposited into his account. I'm not sure where I'm going to find the money for the electric bill. Out of money since July, Rita contacted her congressman and repeatedly called the VA. I feel like getting off the phone at times and just banging my head against the wall. <laughs> I am so frustrated over the fact that nobody seems to get the fact that we've got to have the money to pay the bills. So she contacted Aid on Your Side. We reached out to the director of Stetson University's Veterans Advocacy Clinic, Stacy Ray Simcox. She sits on a new board called My VA, along with local and regional VA directors. So I emailed uh, Director Witte, who was very responsive. And when she found out about it, she wanted to fix it immediately. And within an hour... Yeah, you brought him back to life. The VA says it will make Walter financially whole by the end of the week. Thank you very much. Still no real explanation from the VA about why this happened, but Walter isn't the only one. Eight on Your Side helped sort out declared dead mix-ups for Navy veteran Mike Riker and Marianne Clue, who's the wife of a veteran. This problem impacts about a dozen veterans and their spouses every month. Oh well, and, and clearly the scope of this issue of caring for our veterans, all of these veterans, they, and they're not getting any younger no. here, Steve. What needs to happen to change the way that this country treats its veterans? Well, you know, I would hope that president-elect would choose a leader who's used to getting things done, not just a politician. I spoke last week with former Navy Commander John Wells, whose name surfaced as a possible VA secretary. His suggestions make the VA veteran-friendly, with an emphasis on service rather than bureaucracy. Review the Federal Code of Regulations and get rid of rules that contradict one another. Assign ombudsmen to each regional office. E-file records, making them more accessible. The list just goes on and on. So, so what are veterans who need help supposed to do? Well, we know that these issues with the VA are going to continue. They're ongoing issues. If you or someone you know served our country, needs help, and has exhausted all avenues for resolution, call me. I want to help. And in a lot of cases, I can help. Or you can call our Target 8 helpline at 1-800-338-0808. So many veterans deserve better, and all of us here at News Channel 8 want to make it right. Very, very true. Thank you, Steve. Sure. And that's going to do it for our Target 8 special. Thank you so much for joining us.